So Joe Biden speaking to CNN here, and um, he continues to copy Hillary Clinton's failed 2016 campaign. Watch. You have made a big point of saying the threat here with the current administration is abroad. Well, what exactly bothers you abroad? What bothers me abroad is, look, the idea that we can go it alone with no alliances for the next 20 or 30 years is a disaster. How are we going to deal with stateless terrorism without doing what I've been able to do with the president, put together coalitions of 50, 60 nations to take it on? I come out of a generation where we were trying to be the policemen of the world. We can't go in every place. We need allies. He is absolutely dissing them. He's embracing thugs. He's embracing Kim Jong-un, who is a thug. He's embracing Putin, who is a, who is a flat dictator. He's embracing people who, in fact, and he's stiff-arming our friends. He's threatening NATO to pull out of NATO. He, I mean, come on. He says he's gotten NATO to give in more oh, money for their defense because of his tactics. Oh, come on, man. And by the way, the idea that uh, um, NATO think, let me put it this way. If he wins re-election, I promise you, there'll be no NATO in four years. So with North Korea, the idea of reaching out, President Obama, Vice President Biden wanted to do more than that. The Republicans used to whack you on the head. You can't be nice to people who are our enemies. Hasn't this president done what you wanted to do by reaching out to Kim? He did the exact opposite. He gave Kim everything that he wanted, legitimacy. He gave Kim, he ended our relationship as a practical matter with South Korea and Japan as a united front and let China off the hook. He put us in a position where we say, by the way, I love the man. I know what he's doing. He hadn't done a thing. He hadn't done a thing. Kim Jong-un. And what have we done? We've suspended exercises. All right, let's go through this. Um, every single part of that was obnoxiously terrible and a recipe to lose an election. So he's complaining. At the end there, he brings up, they stopped our exercises. You know what he's talking about? Um, the United States likes to do provocative and offensive um, military games and military exercises right by North Korea's border. So, in other words, we like to constantly um, provoke them and poke them and remind them, like, hey, just so you know, at any time, if we really wanted to, we could take your ass out. There's nothing that makes the world less stable than that. You basically have, like, a child dictator constantly being reminded by the world's sole superpower who all the time topples governments. You basically have him being reminded... Uh, you could be on borrowed time, so just to let you know, we might fucking take you out. Who, us? Pfft, no big deal, bro. We're just doing war games on your fucking border. Imagine any other nation. Imagine Iran, Russia, whoever. You fill in the blank. Um, doing war games on the Mexican border. Like, the border between Mexico and the United States. Just doing military drills and doing fake invasions and shit and flying planes. How would we feel? We'd be like, oh, that's cool. They're just, they're just doing ec exercises. That's it. They're just doing exercises. No, we'd be like, whoa, this is a fucking act of war. This is a provocation. What are you, crazy? Get the fuck out of here. What are you doing? But us doing it to North Korea? Pfft, to him, that's called Tuesday. It's like, what do you mean? Yeah, of course we're threatening, you know, countries that didn't attack us and we're doing it on regular basis. What do you mean? He's, go he's attacking Trump because Trump um, stopped those exercises. By the way, I don't even know if he actually did. He said he was going to, but it could be like all the other things Trump says and then doesn't do. Oh, we're going to get out of Afghanistan, and then we're still in Afghanistan. Oh, we're going to get out of Syria, and then we're still in Syria. So I have no idea if he actually stopped them, but by the way, if he did, good! Good! That makes the world a more safe place, you fucking jackass! North Korea's not going to attack us. You make it more likely that there is an attack by if you keep doing fucking military exercises on their border. Joe Biden acts under the assumption that we run the world and we can do whatever the fuck we want. We can violate international left and uh, international law left and right, and if you don't like it, you could fuck off. That's how Joe Biden acts. You think that's popular, Joe? You think that's what it is? Okay. Then he says, you know, oh, if Trump's elected, there'll be no more NATO. <laughs> do you think a single mother in Milwaukee... This is going to resonate with her, you know? I mean, we should be talking about infrastructure here in this country. We should be talking about raising wages. We should be talking about cutting the price of medicine in half. 
We should be talking about Medicare for all getting everybody covered. We should be talking about legalizing marijuana and releasing our nonviolent drug offenders. Joe Biden is fear-mongering over the end of NATO. Joe, I got bad news for you. There's a decent chance a majority of the country doesn't even know what the fuck NATO is. And then we got the worst of the worst, man. He says, um, he, he's fear-mongering about if Trump continues down this path, we'll have, quote, no alliances. So let me decode that from Washington, D.C. speak for you. Because what he's saying is Donald Trump is an isolationist. And that's not a good thing because we need to be engaged around the world. So we need to be the policemen of the world. We need to deal with the 50 or 60 nations that we worked with previously to end terrorism. So in other words, the fear mongering is, oh, that Donnie, he's too non-interventionist. Oh. I'm telling you, man. It's like he looked at Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign and said, nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. It was going that direction. Let's complain about how Donald Trump doesn't want to attack Syria. That'll work. Oh, God, you're so stupid. I'm so stupid. Um, and finally, he talks about this president, man, he's embracing thugs and dictators. That's crazy. You were the vice president. What do you think happened with Barack Obama and Saudi Arabia? What do you think happened? They went in there and Barack Obama said, Hey, you. You better stop what you're doing in Yemen. No. You rolled over for them. You said, oh. Oh, are you committing a genocide? Tee hee hee. Here, have more weapons and more money. Oh, is that you, Netanyahu? Did you just do Operation Protective Edge where you took out 80% civilians, including 500 um, children? Well, that's okay. Take a break and reload. And we'll give you uh, more weapons. But the Trump is a bad guy because he's friends with thugs and dictators. So were you, you charlatan, you fraud, you con man. Friends with thugs and dictators. And notice, he only picks out the ones who are the official state enemies. Like, oh, Putin and Kim Jong-un. Terrible. Do you have anything to say about our continued alliance with Saudi Arabia and how Trump gave them weapons and gave them money? Do you have anything to say about... You know, our relationship with Israel? You want to talk about a thug? You don't think Netanyahu's a thug? He's as thuggish as they get. He just jacks land whenever he wants to. It doesn't matter that it's not his. Or do you have nothing to say about that trade? He has nothing to say about them. Why? Because he says, Oh, our friends are, and our allies, we're moving further away from them. Well, we need to if you want to do the second part of what you said, which is stop embracing thugs and dictators. So he's... I'm telling you, man, he's stuck in the 1990s. There's no escape for him. Uh, and finally, he says, he, he gave Kim Jong-un legitimacy. Yeah, but that's exactly what the Republicans said about you when you and Obama did the nuclear agreement with Iran. And the Republicans were totally full of shit then. You were right then. And now you're just copying their bullshit, except you're doing it with North Korea. Gave them legitimacy. I got news for you. He runs a country. <laughs> Gave him legitimacy. He literally runs a country. Pretty sure that's legit, whether or not you want to recognize it, whether or not you want to realize it. You might want to shove your head in the sand and scream, la, 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 I don't see it, I don't see it. But that's pretty goddamn legitimate. Gave him legitimacy. They, they recycle the Republican arguments and use them even though they're Democrats. What does that say about the, Joe Biden's core? What core is there? Nothing. You're fucking, you know, pantomiming a... Is that the right word? Pantomiming? You're pantomiming arguments that you used to hear and acting like they're serious. No. The Republicans were assholes when you guys were in the White House, and now you're trying to be an asshole too. And you're trying to out-hawk Donald Trump. And by the way, that was full of lies. So there was one point where he said, um, Trump effectively ended our relationship with South Korea. What are you talking about? They... They love what we're doing with North Korea right now. Of all of Donald Trump's stuff on foreign policy, the one bright spot is North Korea. And by the way, that is on fucking fragile ground. I mean, that is on thin ice, baby. 
that any minute, Kim Jong-un so much as sneezes in the wrong direction, and that shit can crumble. So what you should be doing is resisting from the left, and what you should be saying is, okay, no, we need even more negotiation and even more diplomacy, and let's iron out a deal right now. Let's get a deal right now. That's the resisting you should be doing, but no, you're resisting from the right. You're saying it ends our relationship with South Korea when South Korean uh, President Moon loves this shit. The Korean public, South Korean public, they're ecstatic that Trump just walked on North Korean soil for the first time. That brings us away from war. They live in the constant fear of war. And finally, we're moving towards peace. And your ass is out there like, well, hold on now. I don't know about all this peace stuff. You're giving him legitimacy. Oh, God. Terrible. Hillary Clinton 2.0, recycled right-wing garbage, trying to out-hawk Trump. Of all the stuff to attack Trump on when it comes to foreign policy, we're still in Iraq. We're still in Afghanistan. We're still in Syria. We're still doing drone strikes in eight different countries. We have a shadow war going on in Africa. We have neocon John Bolton and Mike Pompeo throwing darts at a fucking map and saying, Invade there too! And your ass is like, oh, I don't know about this. I don't think you're doing enough war, sir. Oh. Uh.